What's up everybody? So in this video we're going to be talking about everything that you need to know for D4.3. Make sure to first head over to teachme.org to get yourself a big brain membership. This will give you access to the most amazing notes you'll ever see. Tons and tons of IB style questions and we even have mock exams there now. So without further ado, let's just get started. So first we're going to talk about the greenhouse effect and how exactly it applies on Earth. So we're going to explain it in terms of a real greenhouse because you, if you understand how it works in terms of a real greenhouse, then to understand how it applies on Earth will be really, really easy, all right? So a greenhouse is a structure that is very special because it can retain a lot of heat, retain, uh, absorb and retain a lot of heat, which means the temperature inside of a greenhouse is unusually high. And a lot of people use greenhouses because certain species of plants require these higher temperatures to be grown or to be cultivated, all right? So now the question is, how does a greenhouse do this? How does it retain so much heat? It all starts with our sun. So here we have our sun. Our sun is constantly emitting what we call short wave radiation. You don't have to worry as a bio student exactly what this means. Just know it absorbs, it emits short wave radiation, which are literally waves that we can't see that are shorter waves than other waves. All right. And um, um, this includes visible light and UV light. Now, UV light is the one that we all wear our sunscreen for. Now, this these rays are going to be emitted from the sun, solar radiation, and it's going to go towards this glass. And some of it will be reflected, okay? And a lot of it will pass straight through this glass layer, okay? The glass is permeable to this shortwave radiation. So a lot of it will enter this greenhouse. Now, this shortwave radiation is going to be absorbed by the objects inside this greenhouse. It'll, they will literally soak it in. Now, when they soak it in, it causes them to start heating up. Okay, it causes them to start heating up. Now, after they start heating up, they will start re-radiating or re-emitting some of this um, radiation, but not as short wave radiation. Instead, they converted it into long wave radiation. So they're going to re-emit it as another kind of radiation called long wave radiation. And another name for this long wave radiation is called infrared. And what's special about this long wave radiation is us humans, um, us living organisms perceive, perceive long wave radiation as heat. So this is what makes us kind of feel warm when it interacts with our skin. Now, what's important is when these objects inside this greenhouse re-emit this radiation as long wave radiation, um, you can you can think of this as the following. You know when someone exercises a lot and they, their body starts heating up? You don't even have to touch them. You can just hold your hand near their skin and you will feel the heat. That is kind of what I mean by radiation, all right? So this shortwave radiation is re-emitted. But the thing is, what's very cool about the shortwave radi radiation is that it doesn't pass through this glass layer very easily at all. A very minimal amount of them will actually pass through this glass layer. All right, so I'll put here short wave radiation. Um, and most of it gets retained. It gets blocked um, by this glass layer and reflected back into the greenhouse. So you can imagine now all of this heat, it's not being able to escape into the atmosphere. Now it's kind of, or escape out of this greenhouse. It is being retained inside the greenhouse. So if this kind of, if you give it some time, what will happen is this greenhouse will keep retaining heat, keep retaining heat, and it will eventually get very, very, very warm. So this effect right here that we just talked about is called the greenhouse effect. And we're going to now apply it to our circumstance on Earth. So the first step is really the same. It starts off with our sun here that's going to emit the short wave radiation towards Earth. Now the thing is, now it's before it reaches Earth, it's going to encounter it's going to encounter a layer of air that's surrounding the Earth and we call that the atmosphere. 
So the atmosphere obviously has many sub layers like stratosphere and all that put, but for the IB, you guys just need to know atmosphere is this air layer surrounding the earth. Now this atmosphere is gonna behave just like the glass of our greenhouse. So it's gonna be permeable to the shortwave radiation. So a lot of it will pass straight through the atmosphere, but some of it will be reflected, okay? Now those that pass through the atmosphere will get absorbed by the organisms and the water and the land on Earth, and it will cause them to start heating up. Now, after they heat up, they will re-emit some of that radiation as long wave radiation or infrared radiation, remember? And this is the radiation that humans or organisms perceive as heat when it contacts their skin. Now, the atmosphere, just like the glass, is gonna be impermeable to the short wave, to the long wave radiation. Only some of it will be able to escape. Most of it will be reflected or retained by because of the atmosphere on Earth, allowing the Earth to kind of heat up with time. All right, so that's very, very important. You can see how similar it is to the real greenhouse effect using an actual greenhouse, right? So we're gonna talk about whether or not this is a good thing or a bad thing, the greenhouse effect, because a lot of people misunderstand whether or not it's actually good or bad. But before we do that, we need to talk a little bit more about the atmosphere. So the atmosphere, like I said, is a mass of air. And there's a lot of gases, like oxygen, like nitrogen, like carbon dioxide, like methane, many kinds of gases, all right? But not all of the gases inside the atmosphere um, are able to uh, um, reflect um, long wave radiation and um, contribute to the greenhouse effect. Only some of them are. So there's a lot of gases in the atmosphere, but only some of them are involved in the greenhouse effect. And I'm going to put those gases here, all right, that are called, that are considered to be greenhouse gases or gases involved in the greenhouse effect. For example, oxygen is not one, so that's why I'm not going to put it here. Okay, so here we go. Here we have some examples. Okay, so these are all greenhouse gases. <clears throat> so all of these gases contribute to this effect by reflecting our long wave radiation back towards Earth. Now the most abundant ones are gonna be carbon dioxide and water vapor. So water can be in liquid form and in gas form. So in the atmosphere, it's in gas form. These two are the most abundant. Now methane is the most powerful, but its abundance is very low. So its concentration in the atmosphere is very low. So its overall greenhouse effect is low, even though it's very, very powerful. And the last one is oxides of nitrogen, like nitrogen dioxide or nitric oxide. Um, but these, you guys should just know it is one, but we're not gonna talk um, any more detail about this one. We're really gonna focus on carbon dioxide and methane because it relates a lot to humans' impact uh, in terms of the greenhouse effect, all right? So now, we can talk about the good or bad. So the greenhouse effect is good, why? Because the greenhouse effect allows the earth to be consistently warm over time, regardless if the sun is shining rays or not. For example, everyone has a nighttime, and at nighttime, the sun is not reaching this, these, the radiation is not reaching your country. And imagine if there was no greenhouse effect, then at night, the temperature difference compared to the day would be so drastic that everything would just freeze up, no matter what, right? But because of the greenhouse effect, even though we have nighttime, we, our Earth um, temperature remains somewhat stable. So even at night when there's no sun, your area where you live will be somewhat warm. Maybe a bit colder than at daytime, but it'll be somewhat warm. That's thanks to the greenhouse effect. So this greenhouse effect is really important for the survival of, of a lot of organisms at nighttime or just in general, okay? Now, what's so bad about it? So the greenhouse effect is starting to get a negative connotation because of what humans are doing to it. Humans are causing what we call the enhanced greenhouse effect. We are amplifying this effect by influencing the uh, concentration or the abundance of certain greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. And if we influence the abundance of certain greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, then we are going to amplify the greenhouse effect. We are going to cause more heat to be retained in the atmosphere, and that's going to cause um, various um, um, bad changes in terms of the climate, right? So that's going to lead to climate change, which we're going to talk about later in this video more. So how exactly are humans contributing to the greenhouse effect? I'm going to rush this part a little bit because we talked about this in uh, C4.2, so I'm going to kind of go quickly with this. There are two main ways 
combustion. Combustion of fossil fuels for electricity, for heat and, and in our homes, all re results in pollution which contains carbon dioxide, all right? So that's going to increase our carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere compared to natural or normal levels. Second one is trees. We are chopping down trees. And remember, trees are a carbon sink. They remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere by doing photosynthesis. So if we remove our trees through deforestation, we're going to remove a potential way that can remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. That's going to lead in carbon dioxide um, kind of increasing in the atmosphere, all right? So these are two big ways that carbon dioxide levels are increasing as a greenhouse, okay, which will enhance our greenhouse effect. Another one that we need to talk about is methane. Methane is released when cows fart, when cattle fart. And the thing is, we are doing more and more and more farming to be able to feed everyone on earth. So we're having more and more cattle. The more cattle we have, the more methane is released, the more methane in the atmosphere, and the more the greenhouse effect is enhanced. So there are other ways which methane is increased in the atmosphere because of humans, but we're going to talk about that later in this video. So understand this big concept here of the greenhouse effect and how it's actually a good thing, but because of the enhanced greenhouse effect thanks to humans we call something an effect that is caused by humans we call anthropogenic so anything that is caused by humans we call anthropogenic so this because of this anthropogenic effect we are enhancing the greenhouse effect which is going to have devastating consequences and we're going to talk about that um, later in this video more Right before we go into the positive feedback cycles related to the whole greenhouse effect and all that, we're going to talk about a very important thing here that the IB wants you to know. It's correlation and causation. It's very important. And I have a very interesting example to help illustrate this. For access to our full-length premium videos and so much more, head over to teachme.org now.